Hello and welcome to the Mexop demonstration series where you can see live demonstrations for real users and real world applications. For more information about our products or to schedule your own live demonstration just give us a call or visit us at www.mexop.com. In this demonstration RhinoCam 2017 is used to perform 4-axis profile machining. Without further delay, we invite you to sit back and enjoy the demonstration. So if you just wanted to follow the contour of this, we would do a profile. Okay. And we have methods for four-axis profiling, four-axis pocketing and facing, and these can be used on uh, parts that have constant radiuses, like the one that you have right here. It's a constant radius. So you can go into four-axis methods, and you'll notice mm -hmm. that these are the different four-axis continuous methods that you could program. And we have four axis spacing, pocketing, profiling. Now these can be used for like wrapped features where these features are wrapped to a part or cylinder that has a constant radius. And in this case, okay. this is a good example for that. Now, uh, rather than having to go through and pick each of these uh, edges to define the boundary, you can use uh -huh. the feature in Rhino called, um, what is called the you know, curve from objects duplicate border. You can do the duplicate face border. Just pick the face right there and it actually creates the curve boundaries around each of these faces as you notice it. Yeah. Okay. That makes the selection process a lot easier. So you go into four axis, you pick profiling, and it mm -hmm. warns me here saying that my rotation center and the Z0 are two different locations. I'm just going to accept that because certain machines expect that your Z0 and the rotation center right to be in the center of the part. So mm -hmm. some machines do not handle the offense, but you know most machines do handle it. So we just put out a notification like a, a message for the user so they are aware of it. Now you pick the curves. So here I can just go pick these as my geometries for cutting it. So I could be selecting either the curves or I can go individually select each of those surface edges from it. So I'm just going to go pick each of these in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pick this one too right here. So I have all of these selected. As you notice mm -hmm. these boundaries here. I go grab a tool for it. Now I had a library of tools loaded but I could go in and add new tools as I create new operations. So I would be using like an end mill. Now since this part is fairly small, uh, what size cutter end mill would you like to use for it? Let's use an eighth inch. An eighth inch. Okay, you want to go something smaller than an eighth inch or you want to stick with an eighth inch? Eight will be fine. Eight would be fine. Okay, so that would be 3.175 millimeters. And I can also set my flute length, the shoulder length, and the tool length in here. I can also update my properties for the tool. Uh, the tool numbers can be set right in here. So I have it set to four, but I can change them to tool number one, specify the material for the tool, set the feeds and speeds. This can be set based on the material you're working with. You also have a built-in feeds and speeds calculator, depending on the stock material and the tool material. So if you're working with steel or you know titanium or whatever material is, you could pick the uh, okay. stock That's what material. 4130 steel. Okay, 4130. And you have and we your... we want uh, it to be a carbide in mill. Okay, it's going to be a carbide. Okay. And you can set your surface speed, the feet per tooth, and it can give you recommendations on your cut feet and feet and speed. So if I change this parameter in here, the feet per tooth, you will notice that it automatically recomputes the uh, spindle RPM and the feed rates. And I can change my spindle RPM and you'll notice that the cut feeder automatically gets updated. I can accept this, save, edit to tool, and now my tool is defined. So we have the uh, flat mill 1 8 inch. We go to feet and speeds, you'll notice that the feet and speeds are being loaded from the tool. We can establish the clearance definition. Here we can set it to a stock max plus a radius, so you'll notice that the clearance is being, you know, set to a six millimeter above the maximum radius of the stock. And we can establish the cutting parameters in here. So I'm going to set the tolerance. I can choose my cut direction. I can specify whether to cut inside or outside. In this particular case, we would like to cut on the inside of these ladder, uh, the curves. Set the cut levels in here. So this would be basically the, the thickness in here, the height, how deep you want to go. So you can actually use the tools in Rhino to measure it if you'd like. You could analyze a distance. And I can pick the two points in here. So that's about a 1.5 millimeter. So maybe I can go slightly deeper into it. Maybe I could say 
then I could split it up into multiple steps. I could say I want to go in steps of 0.2 millimeters. And if you'd like to do any entry and exit, you could do that, or you could just set it to none, a pick generate. So this is going to produce a profile cut. Mm -hmm. Cool. And if the cutter is too big, you can't fit into it, it's not going to gouge the part. Right. Well, we're going to have um, a radius in each corner anyway, so okay. it's just not on the drawing that way. Okay. So what I programmed here was a profile cut as you noticed it. So it just right. follows the contour around it. So now we want to run a verification in here. We got the um, operation selected. And then I'm going to hit the play button. And this shows your profile cut. Now you'll noticing that in this particular case, you know, what you're seeing is the, the, the tool following the cut pattern and the part remains stationary because what we're doing here is just a simulation of the um, cut material. We're not doing a machine tool simulation in here, so as you notice it right there. And the tool remains normal to the axis of rotation. Right. Do you have any questions so far? Oh, no. Okay, so I'm going to let the simulation run to end. You can see the progress of the simulation in here as well. Once this has been simulated, I can repeat the same process for the uh, you know, feature on the other side as well. I can switch back in here. And now when I do a save, or if I do a save as, this information automatically gets saved to the Rhino 3DM file. So it's not adding any additional file formats. I'm going to make a copy of this operation. Right-click, copy, and paste. And now in this particular case, I'm going to double-click to modify it. And all I'm picking is this boundary right in here and I pick generate. So in this okay. particular case, I'm going to process the tool path for the That's tool awesome. on the bottom half. <laughs> and the system will figure out all the angles to uh, compute for the rotations. And somewhere along the line, we have something that shows it how it would actually be on the machine. With yes, the uh, we, do, we do have a machine tool simulation available and we do have a, uh, a handful of machine tool models that are included in here. We can add new machine tools as well. Uh, so we can help you put that in, in place for the machine tool simulation. Is that included in the expert version? Yeah, the machine tool simulation comes with the expert and the uh, pro configurations. Okay, great. And I will be able to demonstrate the machine tool simulation in here. Now, in order for the machine tool simulation, I need to uh, uh, put the uh, rotation center over here on the back of the check here, and then I would probably have to set the zero work zero to the top. Uh, so that's uh, you know that's the way I would have to establish that for the machine tool simulation in order for, uh, to demonstrate that. And I'll show that to you in just a moment. Okay. Okay. All right. So, any questions on? the toolpath processing in here? No. Okay. We can also go right click and do an information to get the estimate on the machining time. This will depend on the base and the parameters that we put in, so it computes an estimated time for you. A lot faster than it does to cut it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I agree. Yeah. Now we do a post process, right mouse button click and then select post, and now the two operations that we programmed are being posted out. Mm -hmm. and it'll automatically uh, process the code and the output file will show up in a text editor like uh, you know you can have it set to output in like a notepad which is the default and as you see okay. here it shows your A axis motions as it rotates your X, Z and A. Mm -hmm. Cool. And this can be now transferred out to your machine tool. 